In this video, I am going to cover demo for the Lambda URL feature which was recently introduced. So I am on my Lambda console and I'll click on create function. I'll author from scratch and I can name my function as maybe demo lambda URL. I'll choose runtime as Python and I'll keep the permission and default execution role as it is. And in advanced setting, if you go down, you'll see this new block. So this is for enabling function URL. And if you click on info here, you'll find all the details that, you know, it's a dedicated HTTP or S endpoint for our function. And you can find all the details below this. Let's say when I click here, so you can see here we have two auth types. So first is AWS IAM and so only authenticated IAM users and roles can make requests to our function URL. And second is none. So none means Lambda won't perform any authentication at all. Anybody who has the URL, they can just go to the browser or go to the postman. They can just hit the uh, URL and they will be able to get the response, whatever our Lambda is sending. So internally, when we are using none here, so this also gives us the detail that Lambda automatically creates a resource based policy and attaches it to our function. But the only thing is the principal here is star. That means everybody is allowed to invoke our function. When I say that authenticated IAM user, so for invoking Lambda, we need this particular permission invoke function URL. When we say principal as star, that means everybody whosoever has the Lambda URL, they will have this invoke function URL permission and they would be able to invoke that. A principal in AWS IAM could be, you know, a user or a role or any application. So this means uh, when we specify none, we just make it make the principal as star so that anybody can access and when we specify AWS IAM, that means we have to specify a particular principal. Then uh, you can configure course also. So these are all the details that we see in enable function URL. I'll just select none here and I'll just click on create function. So our function is created. This is the new section here again, function URL. So you would be getting a new URL here. I've explained in theory part that we can't customize this URL. Okay, so AWS provides us this URL. If I click here, if I open this in the new tab, I would be able to directly get the response. Yeah, you can see here, this is hello from Lambda. And if I go to my code here, and you can see that we are just returning 200 response code and uh, hello from Lambda. And let's say if I change anything here, and I deploy my function, I should be able to see the updated value. Yeah, you can see here, this URL you can invoke from uh, any browser or I can go to postman and just you know use this get method if I click send here yeah you can see here I'm able to see this uh, uh, response now this lambda URL doesn't support routing feature so let's say if I append this my request with the uh, uh, let's say users then I can use query string here let's say name equals uh, j and city equals london then if i click enter here then again i'll be getting the same response because whatever you add at the end it will always go to the base url now let me go to lambda and just add a new print statement here so what i'll be doing here is i'll just printing the event that we are getting here and let's just see that, you know, what, what exactly do we see when we add the extra routing information to our Lambda. So I'll just deploy my Lambda function and I will hit this link again. And I just go to my CloudWatch to see what are the logs that are printed. Now, if I open any of the logs and if I want to see what exactly was the input request, I'll just click on copy here and I'll open maybe JSON for matter here just to clearly see what exactly we are getting. I'll open this one, paste it here and click on process here. I'll click here. So this is the input request that uh, our Lambda is getting. So we printed this thing. If you see here, we have one parameter raw path here. 
row path will come into picture when you pass routing path at the end so if i don't pass users here so if i just go back uh, to my url here so if i don't pass anything here if i just hit the base url so i won't be getting anything here i'll be getting only slash here but here we have users and if you remember i passed the query string also name equals ajay and city equals london so this is all uh, you would be getting in your request then you have headers also and uh, you can see the query string parameters here so so basically lambda doesn't give you any routing functionality or feature but you get all these details so by using this detail you can customize your lambda code whatever way you want yeah if i show you here so in http you can see we are calling get method and uh, the path is slash so in http you can get to know the method is get then the path is users and protocol and then other details this is a get request we are not passing any body here let's just go to postman and uh, try to pass uh, the body here so i'll choose raw here and uh, click on json maybe i can just i'll be choosing post method here so post is also supported here and the same base url i'll be using i'll just make sure you know this is correct i'll just copy paste from here yeah so let's just click on send here we are seeing the same output here because uh, we are not sending anything else from our lambda so this is hard coded in our lambda but this is a different request this is a post request and we are passing the body here so if i go to my logs let's just go to cloudwatch and just refresh so let's click here so you can see here we are getting the body here and the http method is post here let me just copy this and uh, show you in a formatted way yeah you can see here we are not passing any path here because uh, that was the base path from our postman but you can see here the method was post and the body we passing here is uh, name ajay and city london so this is uh, really convenient guys so you are getting all the details and you can customize uh, uh, your lambda whatever way you want so let me just give you one example on this let's say uh, i want to change my code here and uh, i want to make sure that whenever somebody is calling post method they should be sending the request payload in a json formatted way my requirement is if post method request payload should be a json string okay so what i can do here is uh, uh, maybe first i'll try to fetch the method here http method here so uh, i can write here method equals so i can go to my json formatter here so we are getting method details from request context so i'll just copy this then inside that i am calling http and from that i need to call method so you can see here uh, inside request context we have http and inside that we have method okay so this will tell us you know if this is a post method or a get method and now body is uh, at the base so now we can just call uh, i can also print these details here now i will write the if block here a valid json okay in that case uh, i should be returning this as it is else 
I should be let's say returning a, a bad request maybe uh, 400 and I can just say that uh, request payload not valid so this valid JSON I can write a new function here so which takes this uh, body so in this uh, code what I'm doing here is I'm just fetching the method and then request payload then it's a simple uh, uh, if block wherein I'm checking if method is uh, post then in that case uh, I should be receiving a valid JSON right for that I have written a function here which tries to load uh, the JSON and uh, if that's not the case then it throws exception and in that case I'm just returning false here so yeah a simple uh, code here let's just deploy this and then test this code is deployed I'll go to postman let's just test the success scenario okay. yeah it's working hello from Ajay Vadara let's change the yeah I've changed this uh, uh, response to valid request receipt I'll deploy again let's just go to postman and test this now you can see here we have received the correct request let's just change this to any string this is not json so we should be receiving the error yeah you can see here request payload not valid so this is a bad request so this is one such example guys uh, you can tweak your lambda code and uh, what you are getting from raw path you can easily get to know if this is a get request or post request and you can create a complete CRUD operation in a single lambda although that is not recommended because we would be violating single responsibility principle here i hope you like this video and if you liked it don't forget to subscribe my channel for more such videos thank you so much